My name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're going to take you from 0 to 60 on Golf Tournament. So the assumption here is that you've got a charitable golf scramble that you want to run to raise money for either your own organization or one that you are supporting. And we are going to, in this video, walk through how to become a Wackadoo customer for Golf Tournament, how to set up your charitable golf scramble, and then we're going to pretend that we are sponsors who want to pay for pay you for uh, particular sponsorships at your event and then we're fourth we're going to prevent we're going to pretend that we are players who want to sign up to play in your event so we're going to do all of that in this video hopefully in one take and it'll take about a half an hour um so you know uh, hang on you can pause and come back to this as you need to but uh, those are the four main activities so let's get going now the first thing you have to do is to become a Wackadoo customer. The way to do that is to go to, for a golf tournament specifically, you go to the golf tournament page and you click sign up. It's that simple. This is where we gather all the information that we need about you. You are Acme Corporation and we are going to fill in the fields accordingly. You would put in your real contact information because we use this information for uh, contacting you um, for setting up uh, the relational account with Stripe so that you can receive payments. Uh, the username, uh, we're going to use Acme as the primary user there. I'm going to put in both passwords, and I pasted those in because we've typed them in before. I just don't have to do that this time. Uh, 10 minus 5 is 5. It's a really cheesy CAPTCHA mechanism. And now we are, this is Wackadoo taking your money. So you're going to pay Wackadoo $30 for all of, all the stuff that you're about to see. And this is done through a company called Braintree. If you want to learn about how we do this, you can click on that and read um, you know, who we work with and how we do this to protect your credit card information from when we're taking money. It's important to remember that when we're, you're raising money for your charity through one of our applications, we don't take any of that money. Okay, uh, so we're putting in fictitious dates and fictitious information. This is all on their development test data website at Braintree, so we're not giving away any secrets here. We can type this stuff in. Okay, uh, that's all filled in. I click Submit. And again, we're doing this live, so you get this message saying, hey, we're about to take $30 off your credit card. Da, 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 goes through, spins a little bit. Again, we're doing this live. Pardon the hemming and hawing. Uh, but I wanted to see you to see what this looks like in real time in a real situation. That's it. You just became Wiley e. Coyote of Acme Corporation, customer of wackadoo.org, and you just purchased access to Golf Tournament. So now we're going to log in as Acme, which was the username we set up. And da -da, we log in, and there we are. Welcome. Now, the first thing that you need to do in order to be able to receive money is to set your Wackadoo account up to talk to Stripe. And we have a whole video on how to do that, so go watch that. But I'm going to just bounce through it really quickly here. You go to Accounts, the Account page. This is where all that information that you just put in is. And oh, by the way, in case you didn't realize it, you can come in and edit all of this stuff after the fact. You can change your username, you can change your, well the username is not on this page, it's on the users page, but uh, you can change your server prefix, you can do all of that stuff here, including putting in your logo. Now we're going to put in a logo for Acme Corporation just because I found one and I'm going to save that. Now the thing that we're going to look at very quickly, and that's what the other video is about, is this accepting donations from Stripe section. There is a process that you go through when you click on this button. It will take you over to Stripe and you will set up your account. And at the point where you've got enough information there that we know that you can take money, you know, we detect that and say, okay, great. Now we can send people to Stripe with information from our application and your account ID so that they can pay you and we're kind of out of that whole thing. So I am going to go back to the home page here. This is your, your welcome home page when you first log in. It lists all the applications that you have permission to and you have permission to golf tournament because that's the one that you've paid for. And you jump into that application, you get another welcome page. 
This is really sparse because you're logged in and this is mostly used for people when they're actually playing uh, the event and they get a, um, a live uh, leaderboard uh, web app when they play. So it looks better for that one because there's more information there when they're playing. Okay, you can say open the app, which you're in the app. It's just all that does is click on one of these pages. Or you can say how to get started, which is the same thing as doing getting started up there. So we'll do that. We read this page. Um, all the information that you need to know about sort of what we do and how to get going on this is here. Um, we're not going to read through the description of all of the entities that are on this uh, in this application, but we are about to go through all of these steps right here, the initial steps. That's what this video is for. Now, the thing that I want to point out here is that we've already pretended to do this one. Now, when we get to the point where we need to actually have the connection with Stripe, we've got another account that we're going to use that we use for development tef testing purposes that is already pre-populated and set up for this. But I'm walking through the setup process for Acme with you right now. So we've set up with Stripe. Now the next thing is to set up the golf course because you've got to have a place to have your event. So you go to the golf courses page and you create a new one simple. We're going to call it My Golf Links and Yosemite Sam is going to be my uh, contact over there because you know you may need to call over and, and do something there and it's always nice to put in a golf course logo when you uh, are doing that so okay great and now the scorecard pops up. Now we need two pieces of information about each hole. We need to know the handicap of the hole and we need to know what par is on that hole. Um, we only use the handicaps for tiebreaker purposes, but the par is used heavily, obviously, in our live web app, uh, live scoring web app. So I'm going to mimic a course that I play frequently in my area, and I am going to set this up with some pars. I'm not going to actually do the handicaps. I won't waste your time with that. Um, but you would go through that. You would put them in for uh, the course that you are going to have your event at. And we save that. And we have done that next step. Now I'm going to bounce back into getting started. Okay, we've done the golf course. Next thing up is the tournament, including the logo. So just like we clicked on golf courses to go to the golf course. Now you notice we have the golf course selected. When you go to the golf course page and it's selected, it opens up the detail for that one. Otherwise, you get your list of golf courses here. Um, we can go to the tournaments page. Just now we want to create the tournament. And we put in all the information for our tournament. Same, same basic principle here. We're going to call it the Good Cause Open. We're going to play it at my golf links. And we're going to throw this out into June just for fun. And now uh, the home page. Some organizations will have a separate um, you know, organization, that, a company that they hire to do their website, to do... Uh, possibly for their event, things like that. Not everybody does. If you're sort of at the lower budget end of, of things, um, maybe you just want to have a simple page where people can go to sign up. We provide one of those. It's, it's not hugely pretty, but it's functional. It's got the logos on it, and it's got the buttons for registering and things like that. We gave you the URL as a default for, that, for our version of that homepage. Now, over here on the right where it says important URLs for public usage, that's this one right here, homepage. That is also the default homepage. If you change it, you know, if I put this, then the homepage is going to change. And we use the homepage, but we left the copy of the default homepage here just in case you wanted to bounce back to it. That will become apparent later because there's a point where after you register, you say, okay, great, we're done. Go back to the web tournament web page. There's a button there that uses this URL. Okay, the beneficiary for our event are actually we have two charitable fund and fabulous kids camp. You can have one or two or whatever you want to do here, but we only get one name and one URL. And we're going to skip the go live button for a moment. We'll come back to that. Wiley Coyote. I don't have to be the contact for this, um, so I could put in somebody else. Whoops. I can type, I really can. Uh, Marvin Martian. Okay, 
Now, um, let's talk about the tournament logo for a moment. Your tournament logo is um, used widely through the application. Uh, it's used all over the place when we're putting the name of your event up, things like that. If you're raising money for another organization and um, they have a logo that you can use, maybe they, they may or may not want you to use their logo directly as the logo for this event, or maybe they have one, or maybe you have one, you can create one. Um, this is different than your organization, your account logo, which in this case was the Acme uh, Corporation one that we put up here, and you can kind of see a miniature version of it next to my name. Now, um, we don't have one for this, but I'm going to drop in just a kind of a random picture we picked off the web so that we can use this for demo purposes. Um, you know what? I'm going to save that address, yes. Uh, so a goofy Basset Hound picture. Um, and what you've got is a defined tournament. Now, you'll notice that registration is disabled. There are two things that you need to have in place in order to do uh, to go live with the registration. The first is your account has to be ready to s receive credit card payments. And it's not yet. Again, I told you that I'm going to jump over to another account that's set up for that and we'll do that shortly. The second thing is you have to have a price list defined. So when you're having people pay for things, you got to put something in your inventory. Now, you think, oh great, let's go to find the price list. Not yet. We're going to jump back to the getting started and follow those steps because this is why we put it here. After you do your tournament, you've done your golf course, you've done your tournament, now you're going to do your contests. Now this is your long drive, your closest to the pin, stuff like that. So we're going to go in and create contests for this event. Now you can have as many closest to the pins as you want and as many long drives as you want, stuff like that, but you put them on a particular hole when you do it. So we're going to do a long drive contest on 15. And OK, great, there it is. And it's open because we've got one selected. So we unselect and go create another one. And we're going to do a closest to the pin on number 8. Because on that course in the back of my head, that's the one that we would normally do that on. And there you go. We've got contests defined. Now, we only define a handful of different contests. You see the drop down here, straightest drive, longest drive, closest to the pin, longest made putt on a particular hole or a hole in one. Maybe you've got, you know, maybe somebody sponsored a, uh, you know, car giveaway or something like that for, you know, your, your event. Um, I came in that, that close once of winning a car. It was horribly frustrating. Um, okay, so we're back to getting started and we go... All right, define the contest, select the sponsorships that we want to make available for the tournament. Now, this is kind of a duplicate step because we're going to go straight to the price list and you'll see why in a moment. Because this is where we make the selections is on the price list. So let's go to the price list for the tournament. Now, kind of blank. You can do two things. You can create them all one by one and the only things that you can put on are on this list. Or you can initialize and it sort of pre-populates it with everything and then you can just delete stuff. So we're going to do that. It takes a moment and says, OK, great. There they are. This is everything that we can sort of put on this list um, with an exception. We'll talk about that in a moment. But you can have players. Uh, we, we default to mulligans and, and, and cash donation because, again, this is, this is all for charity. This is all to raise money uh, for charitable purposes. And you can define something as uh, adjustable in the shopping cart by the user. So uh, the person who's signing up can adjust how many players are in their group, that kind of thing. And if you have a fixed inventory um, on this thing, then um, you, know, you only have so many players that you can take. Now, OK, I'm going to rabbit trail here for a moment. Uh, we pick 88 as our default for the following reasons. If you have a, a shotgun start and you have a T, a group on all 18 tees, but then you put an extra group on the par fives. Most courses have four par fives, so hence 88 players. So our course, the one that we set up, only has three par fives. So I'm going to knock down my inventory. Um, you would set that to whatever value you want. Leave reserved alone because as people pay, the, the, that knocks your 
the number that are reserved or the number that have been paid for or that you're holding. The available number is the total minus the reserved. So it would be possible for you, for example, if you said, okay, great, I just organized a tournament, but I'm going to grab four spots off of this thing because I want a team for my own that's for our organization, and we're not paying for it. So I just bumped up the number of players, or down the number of players. I didn't knock down my inventory. I bumped up my reserve number. I could have done it the other way too, but either way. Um, okay. Uh, whole sponsorships, longest drive on number 15, closest the pin. This is why we defined contests first. Um, you would not want to change the number of uh, that are available for longest driver closest to the pin. You want you want those things to be one, and they are not adjustable by you can see in here they're not marked as adjustable. Now you get down to your sponsorships, and this is this is where you start thinking about how am I going to raise money? Uh, how are we going to get corporate dollars going into our event? Who wants to sponsor holes? Who wants to sponsor us? Gold, diamond, silver, bronze, whatever. Now, um, you'll notice that there is no bronze on the list. I mean, nobody wants to be the bronze sponsor. Um, you know, want to be a gold or you want to be a silver or maybe silver is the new bronze. I don't know. Um, but these are all the different things that we've seen that people have sponsored that, at different events that I've played in over the years that um, we've seen. And we just, just throw them on the list. Now, it's perfectly possible for you to go in and say, but I don't have, for example, uh, nobody's doing breakfast for our event, and I don't really want the silver one because you know it is the new bronze. Um, we're not doing lunch. We are going to have a dinner, and so we're going to have somebody sponsor dinner. Now, that's sponsoring dinner. Keep that in mind because we're about to do something else there. Uh, we're going to get rid of the snack sponsor, the beverage sponsor, the goodie bag sponsor, the beverage cart sponsor, the putting green, and the driving range sponsor. Okay, great. Now, let's take a quick look. Principal sponsor, diamond, platinum, gold. Eh, I don't, okay. You can use these any way that you want. We don't care what each of these is. This is for you to decide how many there are, how much they cost on all of that. So we are, I'm making this up as I go. Our event, Diamond Sponsor, we're going to have one of them. We're going to have uh, $750 to be a Platinum Sponsor. I'm going to have three of those available. And I'm going to go Gold Sponsor, whoops, $500. And I'm going to have five of those available. Okay. So you kind of you get the idea for how many. Of them, and nobody's bought them yet, so you don't have any reserved. The dinner sponsor, okay, dinner's going to be, you're going to cost $500 to sponsor dinner, and there's only one of those. Good. Okay, now, you're having a dinner. Think about this. I don't see that on the list here. Somebody who's coming to play the tournament needs to tell us, okay, are they actually going to pay for the dinner or, or not? So you come up to new, and you will see on this list all of the things that we just deleted. Okay, principal, silver, breakfast, blah, 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 blah. But down at the bottom, you get this new other item. Okay, so we're going to put one of those on the list. And this is the dinner. Uh, post round dinner. And that's going to be a, oh, I don't know, $50 charge. And we have a fixed inventory of that because we only have 50 slots for that. I don't know, I'm, I'm making this up. It's however you want to do that. And I'm going to do another thing on this list. I'm going to go down and say new other item. And I'm going to say, okay, we're going to do charity logo golf shirts. And those cost $45. I don't know. I'm, again, I'm just making this up. And maybe you've got a fixed inventory for that. Or maybe you wait and see how many you need to order uh, your call. So there we go. We've just defined our price list. There it is. That's, that's, that's what it is. So now we're going to come back to the tournament page and look at the message. Can't go live until your account's ready, but that whole thing about the price list not being there, that's gone. Okay, now here's where we're going to make the shift from this account over to the other account that's already set up with this account, this credit card payment thing. So I'm going to log out as Wiley Coyote of Acme Corp. 
and I am going to log in as user one of fictional charity. Again, this is our test development uh, one, and it has access to all of the apps that we're working. And we go to golf tournament, and again, the same welcome page, welcome Joe. Tournaments, I go to the tournaments page. So we're just bounced over to a different account. We've got a different logo for this tournament, uh, and registration is enabled. Now I can pause registration. I mean, all this is is setting a flag saying, hey, I want to turn that off, I want to turn it on. It gives you some control so that you can have everything set up and then say, okay, when you're ready, go live. Um, but all it does is <laughs> literally, it sets a true false flag in the database someplace that everything looks at. Now, um, here you go. This is it. You've got your tournament, you're ready to go. You have signed up as a wackadoo customer Acme Corporation, or in this case, fictional charity as well. Um, you have set up the good cause open, and we are live. We are able to go out and see what it looks like for someone to come register for our event. That's it. Now, before I jump there, I want to talk again through these important URLs for public usage. You have access to our default homepage URL, and that we're going to use that exclusively. If you had your own website, that would be the one that we would go to. Um, if you change the one that's listed up here under homepage in the corner, that's the one that would show up on, that would be used. That's the one that would show up on this first important public URL. Regardless, you have to go to our sponsor and our player registration pages. And so we give you the URLs for that. Now, the neat thing here is um, it's just a URL. You can go there. These are public access. Anybody can go there. Um, but it's going to have your tournament ID. And notice that it's going to have, in this case, fictional charity has a prefix of test. Acme had acme.wackadoo.org. But that URL is one that you would want to put on that other website if you were to create one. I think I'm getting a little bit convoluted here, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you wanted to get the available player account, your guys would have to be programmers and they would have to do this thing down here, go get the information and then actually do a little bit of math. Um, but that's, you know, for your, if you have another group of people doing the website for that, they'll not understand that. Just show them this information. So, okay, now I'm going to log out and I am going to pretend that I am somebody else. I am now the head of some organization that wants to come in and sponsor your tournament. So, here we go. I go to that tournament page. It is test.wackadoo.org slash golf tournament. This is the welcome page, the same welcome page that you saw that had the name and all of that, but because we're not logged in, we see this instead. Yes, it's got that big commercial here, um, but it's got the name of your tournament, it's got all the information there, and it says you can sign up. Now, if we went and did this for Acme, in fact, I'm going to do this. Let me do this. Uh, I'm riffing. Ta -da, new tab to the right, and we're going to do... Okay, just for fun. Why didn't I have the duplicate button on? I don't know. Okay, so Acme. The good cause open with the Basset Hound. We apologize, but registration has not yet gone live. So all of that stuff, I mean, when you actually go live, it controls it here in the public. But it lets people know. You could send this, you could send this link out to people if you wanted to. Um, but we're going to stick over here with the with the fictional charity. Fictional charity is pleased to announce. You see how we're using stuff from the other database or from the other entities. Now we're going to go in and we're going to pretend we're the sponsor. And this is what the registration page looks like. You have all of the things that you can be sponsored. You can pay for sponsorships, fees, donations, stuff like that. Uh, we put the sponsorships first, and then we put the players and the other things down at the bottom uh, because this is the sponsor sign-up page. So we're going to come in and we're going to fill in Acme Corp. I'm reusing the name in a different context. apologize if that causes any confusion. 
you have to have a sponsor's logo. They have to do that. If they click the checkout, it's going to say, hey, you got to put a logo in. Um, it's going to do that. Now, longest drive, let's see, what do we want to sponsor? Uh, we're going to do longest drive. We're going to do some whole sponsorships. And we're going to do, we're going to be a gold sponsor. And I want to, I'm going to do players separately. Okay, there we go. We're just going to do that. And we're going to do, remember on the price list where it said quantity adjustable? That's what this is. So it, that's what triggers the ability to change this. So now there you go. You got six whole sponsorships, a longest drive and a gold sponsor, and it's $800 worth of corporate sponsorship. And we're ready to check out. Now, this is where you go off of wackadoo.org and you go over to Stripe, pay them the money, and then Stripe pings us back and says, yeah, it went through. Okay. And we get over there and we think, oh, wait a minute. I wanted to do something else. I wanted, to, I wanted not to be a gold sponsor. I wanted to be a, I want to be the diamond sponsor. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to remove the gold sponsor. And I'm going to add the diamond sponsor. Oh, I forgot to change all the prices in this example. So they're all $100. Never mind. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and check out again. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. And again, this is this page is stripes. This is not wackadoos. All we did was say, here's the shopping cart, and here's the people who are going to get paid. That's you guys, fictional charity in this case. And now we're going to put in their fake credit card number and with a familiar looking date and the rest of that. And that's going to be Wiley Coyote. And let's see. Uh, just for fun, and then we hit pay. And at this point, Stripe says, okay, great, payment went through. And then they said, hey, Wackadoo, that shopping cart got purchased. And then we pull this page up and say, oh, great, that shopping cart got purchased. We set up the sponsorships and all the rest of the stuff that's on the back end of our system and show this to the person who did it. There it is. Now, two pieces of email just went out. One was the receipt from Stripe saying, hey, you paid this much money, here were your line items. Now, uh, that email, the line items don't necessarily describe in detail the same things that we're gonna provide. So Wackadoo also, the golf tournament app, sends out a, an email with the details of what's in your shopping cart, and what those line items are. So for example, if you're gonna sign up for players, and we're about to do that, Let's go back to the Good Cause Home. That's where that link, that homepage link is used um, within our system. Um, we're going to go sign up now. I'm Joe Public. I'm just going to, I want to play in this thing. I'm, I'm tired of not playing golf. And, okay, I had to do one editorial cut because I realized that I left my picture big as I did this last section of the video and I need to shrink down so that you can see some of the stuff that was right behind me as I was doing it. So here we go. We're going to sign up as players again. Uh, I'm Joe Public. I want to play in this event because, again, I'm tired of not playing golf. Um, I'm going to be Yosemite Sam. Uh, i got to put an email address in, so I'll put my work email address in. And I'm going to put some players on here. I'm going to buy some, buy some mulligans. I'm going to do some charity logo golf shirts. And I want to buy four of those, and I'm going to buy four mulligans, and I'm going to buy four players, because I want a whole group. Now, I want to do more. I can't. I can only put four people in a group, but if I want to do another group, put another line item on there for players, and you can do four more. So, uh, but it prevents you from trying to associate too many players with one group. Now, um, so let's see. Here we go. Uh, Player first name. I could type all this stuff in again, or I could come over here to the copy button. This is the part that was behind me in the other version of the video. So I'm just going to copy in Yosemite Sam because I don't want to have to type that stuff again. And then I'm going to put in Wiley Coyote and fill in. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do fake. Fake at fake.fake. That's going to be my email address for the other players. You need real, real email addresses. 
We're going to use them later on when people check in and register for the tournament when we want to reach out to people, stuff like that. However, if you don't know all your players, put your own email address in and put in player one, two, three, and then they can be filled in later. Now let's see. Uh, Roadrunner. Whoops. And uh, let's see. Speedy Gonzalez. I can spell. I really can. Okay. All right. Saturday morning cartoons back in the 60s and 70s. All right. Now, um, that's kind of it. There you go. We're going to go check out. And it says, oops, we need a team name. Now, the team name is used to associate these players together. Um, you got to know who, who you're playing with. We don't use this name as like a unique thing in the database. So you can have two teams named Anderson, for example. But um, we do use this to say these four players are all going to be together. We form a team with this name and we put them in a group on a T. Um, so we're going to call this group Acme 1. And if I had another group, I could call them Acme 2, 3, 4, whatever I wanted to do there. And uh, now I'm going to check out. And we're going to go. This is the same thing that happened when we just went over to do the sponsorship thing. Oh, I forgot something. I bought shirts. Okay. Now, I got charity logo shirts. Uh, Sam is an XXL. Wiley, he's a small. Uh, we're going to go small. And, I mean, you can put anything you want in here. I mean, I can type in, you know, shirt size. Uh, Roadrunner, he's going to be small too. Small t-shirt, no, not t-shirt size, just shirt size. Uh, and Speedy Gonzales is going to be extra small because he's a mouse. Okay. Uh, extra small. There we go. Okay, so it, it, again, the note field is there to do exactly this kind of stuff. Um, you know, just it's not um, rocket science. It's just a text field to put things in like who you want to play with. For example, if we were to uh, put in less than four players, you would use that notes field to say, okay, and I want to play with, you know, Phil Jones or whatever his name is. Um, so I put that in. You'll notice that we didn't wipe that stuff out. We just hit it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we're going to the checkout. We are at me one. We're going to go do this. Now I'm ready to pay the money. And we go. And we're going to do this. And da -da -da. Yes, somebody Sam. And 44. Okay. And we're paying. And we're going. And we're back on this page, and we see that we've got all of the information there that we wanted um, from what we put in on the notes field and things like that. And they bought the logo. So all of this stuff is recorded. So Stripe has the payment information in the line items, and we've got the details on the line items for the players and stuff like that. So we go back to the good cause home. There it is. You just went from 0 to 60. You went from not even being a wackadoo.org golf tournament customer to organizing your charity golf scramble using golf tournament. You became a customer of wackadoo. You set up your charitable golf scramble. You pretended that you were a sponsor and signed up to sponsor some things. And you pretended that you were a player and signed up to play in the event. That's it. So this has been about a half an hour of your life, but at the same time, only a half an hour, and you went from zero to all the way online and able to raise money for your charity or the organization, the charity that you're helping to support if you're not the charity itself. My name is Steve Kinsley. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments about this or any other application from wackadoo.org or wackadoo.info, please feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information is on our website on the Contact Us page. Thank you very much and have fun playing golf and raising money for your charity. Thank you.